Okay, so we are on to patriarchy. Make sure you've got the PowerPoint in front of you. Take notes on it or um, write onto the screen where you need to. So first slide, what is patriarchy? We, it's a word that you've probably heard of before. Um, we'll come back to a definition in a minute. So by the end of this, you should be able to define patriarchy and explain its importance to feminist analysis. And we're going to explain different routes to challenging patriarchy. So, the first thing which we've, we can tie back to our American politics knowledge, you've got this picture of Donald Trump signing um, this order, and we've got this tweet from Jessica Valenti. If you're wondering what patriarchy looks like, a group of white men watch as Trump reinstates the global gag rule. So we've talked about this one before, where we said that Donald Trump, I think, was it his second day in office or his third? He signed um, an order saying any money that was received by NGOs could not be used for abortion services, which included counselling or whatever else. So you've got all of these men making decisions about women's bodies, um, which might give you an idea about what patriarchy is all about if, you, you know, if, you, if you're not sure about what the word is. So we've got a lot of men standing around. Um, Kennedy, famous president, said to Eleanor Roosevelt in an interview with her, we want to be sure that women are used as effectively as they can to provide a better life for our people, in addition to meeting their primary responsibility, which is in the home. So Kennedy was, he was very liberal and he was really into supporting women's rights. He did want women to have equal pay conditions if they went to work. He wanted women to have equal working um, conditions, but... He did also say, but we have to bear in mind their responsibilities at home. So although he was all for equality, you know, whether it was his personal belief or not, he had to bear in mind that he, you know, he was looking to be voted. So he had to make sure he was satisfying everybody because lots of people then believed that was a woman's place. Um, and that there were women fighting against uh, women being encouraged to go out to work and earn their own money. I mean, at this time, women weren't allowed to own their um, own credit. They couldn't have a credit card without a husband's permission. If they had money um, and they helped their husband to um, go to college, they then had no access to, to, you know, the man went to college, became a lawyer, earned loads of money. The woman had no access to the money. She couldn't decide where they lived. Um, rape was okay for your, you know, for, as long as it's your wife. Anything outside of that is illegal. So, you know, women didn't have um, access to much outside of the home. Um, he, I mean, he did recognise it was difficult for women because they had, even if they did manage to get some kind of career, they had lots of interruptions because of um, being the the childbearer. So they would have to take leave. They would probably be the one staying at home then until the, ch the child went to school. Um, so, even though we have people, you know, 70 years ago supporting women's rights, 60 years ago, um, they, you know, the, it took a long time for the um, sort of thinking of the whole of society to change. So, next slide, dictionary definition of patriarchy. It's a system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family and descent is reckoned through the male line. So if you've ever had the privilege of watching a period drama, you'll know that you know women, um, all they're looking to do is get married off and it's the man who takes on the responsibility of the house. I don't know if anyone's watched Bridgerton lately, but um, in the Bridgerton family, the dad has died and the brother assumes responsibility. Even if he had been younger than the, the women, he would have been the head of the house. And the mother spends the whole time trying to marry off the daughters. Um, so we've got the father at the top, el you know, the eldest, and then the money, money, property, everything else goes to the oldest son. System of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it. A society or community organised on patriarchal lines. I want you to think, because we'll talk about this at the beginning of next lesson, um, in a live lesson, why does it matter? Why does it matter whether... A man is the leader of the household. Why does it matter that men dominate society? And what I want you to also remember is we're not just talking about the UK. We are talking about the world. So don't just think, you know, 
things have improved in the UK, with, we're talking about lots of different countries. So I want you to think about why that might matter. Um, Kate Millett, she's one of our radical feminists. And we'll come back to her and look at her in a little bit more depth. She um, says, patriarchal government is an institution whereby that half of the populace, which is female, is controlled by, by that half, which is male. And she has two principles for her definition of patriarchy. One, male should dominate female. Two, elder male should dominate younger male. Um, so, therefore, patriarchy is a hierarchic society. Always got someone at the top, and that's the man. Um, and it's characterised by uh, sexual and generational oppression. Now, I want you to think about how we might, in the UK, we might now disagree with Kate Millett. We might say that actually, that doesn't happen. Males don't dominate females. And secondly, older males don't dominate younger males. And again, we'll talk about these at the beginning of next lesson. Um, what people also talk about is that we have to bear in mind that Kay Millett's um, ideas might not fit into UK politics so much anymore, but they are relevant in other countries. Like, for example, um, different countries where they have different traditions, cultures, um, African countries where female circumcision is still carried out. You've got about eight, 80 million people in the world, women in the world, having FGM done to them. Um, you've got women, um, well not women, but baby girls, they're not wanted because because they're expensive. Because when they get married, you have to give a dowry for them. So it might be something that we don't really think about in the UK, but again, we have to bear in mind that these are things we'll have to think about in other countries. Um, so on to the next slide, it's a man's world. Now, this is from 2015. So the percentage of female candidates for 2015 we don't mean the people that actually got elected, but how many, how many female candidates did the parties actually put up? We've got the Alliance Party with the most. So 41% of their potential candidates they wanted to get elected were women. And all the way down to UKIP. Now I want you to think about whether there's any kind of um, pattern there. There might be an ideological pattern, a left-right divide. But you know, UKIP all down to 12%. So only 12, it could be that women didn't want to stand for them, or it might be that they don't want to choose women. Um, we've got, on the next slide, the percentage of election candidates who were female in the general election 2017. Um, now the 100% one is, is a women's party, so it's going to be that way. But again, see if you, you know, you can see any kind of um, ideological divide. UKIP again, the worst at 13%. So, patriarchy in different forms of feminis feminism. So, Sylvia Warby, in her um, thesis, Theorising Patriarchy, identified patriarchy as a system of social structures allowing men to exploit women. Now, when she was writing, she said, she said men used to directly control women. So women weren't allowed to leave the home. They weren't allowed to own, um, they weren't, weren't given access to funds and things like that. The man made all the decisions on their behalf. The man spoke for them. But she says, but now we've got it sort of woven into society. We don't notice it so much. So women are working. Women are going out and socialising. But we still see um, some ways in which women are exploited through these things. Culture, state, sexuality, paid work, household and violence. I want you to think about how, you, how women might be disadvantaged by some of these things. So stop me from talking and then just write down some ideas against each one um, about how culture may affect how, how successful women are how the state itself might do that and go through each one. So spend about five minutes on it and then come back to me. Next, um, patriarchy in different forms of feminism. So we have to remember that not all feminists are the same. And the main three strands that we look at are liberalism, so liberal feminists, socialism, 
Um, and so socialist feminist and radical feminist. And the first one we look at is the liberal feminists. Betty Friedan is our main thinker here. Now I said over summer to watch Miss America. If you haven't watched it on iPlayer, watch it. It's so good. And we learn all about these political thinkers on there. So Betty Friedan, um, really, really famous. She wrote a book called The Feminine Mystique. Um, and she talked about this problem with no name. She was writing, so women had got the vote, but that didn't mean that women had equal rights. They were still at home. And there was this idea that women loved it. There was, you know, women, they were so mysterious through their beauty and their charm. And they loved being at home because they were just so feminine and passive and gentle. And she was like, this is rubbish. Women don't have fulfillment through being in the home. And some women do. But she was saying not all women want to do that. Lots of women want to go out and work. They want to be educated. Um, now, liberals, so she's a liberal feminist. Liberals want to reform the system. So they don't want to completely abolish it. They just want to reform it. So gradually reform it. They want to work within the system. So there'll be no revolution. And they would be more keen to sort of change legislation itself. Liberals believe that humans are of equal worth and should have the opportunity to access public life. And this goes back to the idea of equality of opportunity. And now when you look at liberalism, you'll learn that this is really, really important for liberals. So, you know, it's a fair, just society if everybody has access to the same resources and, and the potential to do well. And this is why education is really, really important. Because of course you're not going to have women becoming barristers and solicitors if they haven't been given the chance to actually go to school. Um, Betty Friedan also interestingly thought that if men and women were more equal, women would actually learn to love their, their husbands. Um, and interestingly, when women were encouraged to go to work, there were a lot of divorces. So there had been women who felt trapped. So divorce did happen. But it did slow down the 1980s once you know everybody got into the swing of things. So people had felt trapped. And as soon as they could make their own money, that was the end of, the, of that. Right, uh, if you go into the next one. So we've looked at liberal feminists. What do socialists think? Everything for socialists is always blamed on capitalism. So Engels said, um, in the origin of the family, private property and state, a woman's position has been challenged since the introduction of capitalism. Now the thing with capitalism is, man goes to work, man, man makes money for someone else, someone has to stay at home and ha have the children, the future workers, someone has to cook and clean, because if you don't do those things, then who's going to look after the worker? So they think that capitalism is to blame for everything. Um, men insist that women are monogamous, but they're not always themselves. Women are compensated with a cult of femininity. So instead of women actually being paid for working at home, because, you know, it's a joke, cooking, ironing, cleaning, looking after kids, and then, you know, having to go to beg their husbands for um, pocket money, basically, they're, they're sort of compensated with this idea that, oh, we'll look after you, you know, we'll take you out, I'll buy you a necklace, something like that. The cult of femininity, the idea that you need to be looked after, you're, you know, you're you're inferior, we'll look after you. So again, they, and they blame capitalism for this. And last of all, Faria and Owen, who were socialists, actually said, get rid of it all, let's just go and live in a free love commune. So, radical feminists. Um, so we've got, like, Greer is one of the most radical. In the female eunuch, she said that women have been conditioned into a passive sexual role so um, act in both terms of or sexual relations, so it's the man that dominates, women aren't there to, it, to enjoy any of it, um, and that women are more feminine and quiet, um, and they don't speak up for themselves, and the man dominates. In um, sexual politics, Kate Millett said, patriarchy is a social construct running through all social, economic, and political life. So basically, until that's destroyed, um, nothing will be improved. And they said, this could only be challenged through consciousness raising. So we have to actually make people aware of things. And we have to change the attitude of society. There's no point in changing laws 
like liberals think, if we don't actually change the way that people work, um, think. So in summary, patriarchy refers to the domination of men and the subordination of women in society at large. It reflects the rule of the husband father within the conventional family. It's a concept that plays a particularly important role within radical feminism, where it highlights the pervasive, systemic and institutionalised power relation between women and men. Patriarchy implies parallels between the patriarchal family and patriarchy in the larger society. Patriarchy suggests that female emancipation requires not merely more equal access for women to the public sphere, but also a radical restructuring of the private sphere. So we need to make sure that, okay, women can, can vote, they can go out to work, but then they're not still burdened with, with all the childcare responsibilities, with all the house responsibilities. And then we know for socialist, feminist, patriarchy and capitalism are interlocking systems of oppression. And further to that, so for the next lesson, you'll be, you'll be talking about how there are different views about how, um, how patriarchy is viewed and how it should be um, tackled. So remember I've said that for liberals, it's, it's like gradual reform. For socialism, well, it's going to be the end of capitalism. And for radical feminists, it's all about changing the attitudes of society. Um, I've set task for you to do on Firefly, so hopefully that will make sense. Go back, watch bits again if you need to, um, and make sure you're ready to answer some of those questions at the beginning of the next lesson. Okay, bye.